Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Jimmy Brooks, and I've owned a 2.0 turbo Camaro for over one year now, and put 60,000 miles on it. In that time, I've found so many things I love about this car, but every car has its flaws, so I'm gonna go over five things that really bug me about this 2.0 turbo Camaro. Now, if you haven't seen my video about five things I love about the 2.0 turbo Camaro, definitely go check that one out first. It's in a completely different format, and I go really in depth on what makes it such a good sports car. With that said, on to the video. So number one is definitely going to be that heavy flywheel. This car is so slow to rev up and down. It just has no zippiness to it around town. And it takes a frustratingly long time for the revs to fall after changing a gear. And I'm sure having a heavy dual mass flywheel like that is restricting some power as well. I've noticed that a lot of modern cars have gone to a heavy dual mass flywheel like that, but that's just not the feel you want in a sporty car. For me, it just removes a lot of the practicality of driving this car on a daily basis, like you should be able to. All right, from... Let's say 6,000 RPM, let's count it down, how long it takes for these revs to drop. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten? Oh, look it! That was like 14 for it to finally settle down all the way. Moving on to number two is the throttle pedal lag. Even with my Vitesse throttle controller changing my throttle mapping, it's just a band-aid fix really for the unavoidable lag in all of these new Chevy Camaros. It's not just the turbo car. Even with the naturally aspirated V6 and SS models, the stock throttle mapping is atrocious. You have to have your foot more than halfway through that pedal to get any torque out of it. And it just doesn't inspire a sporty vibe like some of the Ford performance vehicles I've driven, like the Focus ST, the Mustang GT, even the EcoBoost Mustang's throttle is fantastic. Anyway, moving on to number three, that is going to be the clutch engagement. So I love how light my clutch is, and I could even live with that long throw it has. But why does the bite point have to be in the last tenth of the clutch if it has such a long throw? It's just very off-putting and extremely counterintuitive. That's like the equivalent of having an extremely long shifter throw in a sports car. It's just another thing that makes day-to-day -day driving a little more annoying. So number four is, dare I say it, the turbo lag. Now, before anyone goes to the comments and says, Well, you bought the turbo motor, of course you're gonna have lag. Just hear me out. Turbo lag is not something most modern cars have nowadays. If we're talking about a McLaren or a GTR, then yes, I expect some turbo lag with all that boost. But most four-cylinder turbos nowadays use very small turbos that could spool up extremely fast to give you torque in those lower RPMs. I know this sounds weird coming from a car enthusiast, but I think they may have used too big of a turbo for this model. Honestly, I think they went with this size turbo just in an attempt to look better on paper than Ford EcoBoost Mustang. Now I'm mainly complaining about the stock setup. Of course there is a positive to what they did, and that is the significant power gains you can get from a simple tune on these cars. And finally, number five is the damn heat soak. If you live in a decently hot area, you'll probably want the air conditioning on sometimes. And on the Turbo Camaro, they've programmed such an aggressive cut and boost in the heat when the AC is on. I'm sure it's Chevy taking all the necessary precautions to not have any overheating issues with the performance cars like they did with the Z06. This is overall a good thing, but it really hits the 2.0 Turbo Camaro hard. And I just don't like that you're losing a nice chunk of horsepower every five degrees over 65 it gets. If it's hot out and you have the AC full blast, you may just get gapped by a Civic Si. If it's cooler out, the torque difference is night and day. This Camaro really loves the cold. That's when the boost really comes alive. Well, I think I touched on most of the things that Chevy could improve on on these new Camaros, particularly the 2.0 Turbo Camaro, to make it a much sharper feeling sports car. And I know it can be done at this price point, as the Subaru BRZ and like the new Miata ND have none of these issues. If anyone can relate on these issues on the new Camaros, comment down below. I'm curious to see if anyone else can feel the weirdness in this manual transmission especially. Well, I hope you guys found this video interesting. If you want to see more videos like this one, comment and subscribe, and I'll see all of you guys in the next one.